All right, thank you for staying with Citizen TV. You're just in time for this discussion that we're about to begin. We're calling it State of the Nation because we talk about several issues facing the nation today, from politics to policy issues as well. Let me introduce my guest to you real quick, beginning from my immediate left, Honorable Dr. Otiende Amolo, Member of Parliament for Arieda. Thank you so much for making time. Thank you. His Excellency Dr. Alfred Mutua, Governor for Machakos. Thank you so much for making time. Thank you. I'm very glad to be here. And on my right, Honorable Kimani Omatangi, Senator Kiambu. Thank you so much for making time. We is with us here and honorable samson cherarge senator for nandi we are still waiting for him as soon as he checks in we'll have him on as well let's start off as usual with the newspaper review and start off with the standard from the top side there sonko wars from the frying pan into the fire no end in sight for troubled ex-governor mike sonko as police seek 30 days to detain him on terror claims Womatangi, I'll start with you. Does this surprise you in any way without getting into the merits of the case? I mean, we saw a, a point where he was a darling to the state. Yep. Now, all of a sudden, there are many wars after him. Can I start by protesting? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what are you protesting about now? <laughs> that, you, that you call everybody else doctor and you don't call me doctor. He's only a doctor like you might have Yes, I am one. Right. Okay. Yes, <laughs> oh, <yes>. Much obliged. <laughs> but anyway, uh, Trevor, let me say yes. good morning to our viewers. And yes. um, uh, thank you for having us here this morning. And to comment on that on that Sonko story because it uh, I think it's tied together with um, w with a lot of the other events that have been on ongoing in the country where where we've had um, quite a quite a rough ride with a lot of uh, drama you know insightful comments and, uh, and and people saying things that are not uh, going to help this country and we've been down that road before. Uh, so, so starting from that, 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 that part, we must acknowledge that um, it is extremely important at this time that we do not allow ourselves to slide down uh, the route that we have been uh, by either allowing people, no matter who they are or who they've been, to make utterances that uh, will lead or can lead this country to chaos. Uh, but having said that, I think um, it's also important that I, I follow it with, uh, with a writer that um, I think then, no matter uh, what charges somebody is facing, it is important that uh, if they've been charged in a court of law, that then they should prosecute their case in that court of law and they're accorded all the rights that are due to them according to our constitution. Yes. Uh, Such so, so that uh, if Sonko is found to have uh, charges that he's, he's supposed to uh, answer to, and uh, probably having, uh, because I, I must consider, Trevor, that for example, some of the comments he made earlier, you know, uh, mentioning people's names, citing certain cases where it is injurious to either somebody's character, those are serious issues to the other party. But that notwithstanding, uh, the, our constitution is very clear on uh, either, you know, right to bail, and, uh, and, and uh, right to representation and, and so on, and, and the other freedom, freedoms yeah. that uh, he should enjoy. And so I believe that uh, the right way to go is um, to ensure that he also has his rights, he's given bail, he yeah. can come defend himself <coughs> in court. If he's found guilty at that time, yeah. then uh, he should then face the full wrath of, of, of the law. Okay. Uh, but but um, I, would, I would really be... Uh, be, be urging uh, all that are in the system, uh, be it from the judiciary, be it uh, those that are accusing him. Yeah. Uh, that You see, for example, government is doing a lot of good work right now, development-wise. Uh, you find there are projects ongoing, building here, building there, building there, and, and other things that government is, and especially when we are trying to, to, to talk to people about the BBI and other, and other, and other issues. It, it, it should not uh, be... Uh, you know, something that we're going to do without uh, caring or thinking, that we draw attentions from those good things that government is doing yeah. to other side shows. You know, because uh, what that has the potential of doing is, is attracting attention to other issues that are either non dominant. And you know how human beings react. Yeah. Uh, you react more to your emotional uh, compulsions more than uh, facts yeah. or, or, or real things that are happening. And so if those kind of things happen, you find the whole country will be glued and, uh, and, and emotionally inclined to start talking about things which necessarily yeah. uh, do not constitute what uh, government may want to be, okay. uh, h how the perception or performance of, performance yeah. of the government is, right. I believe. That that what do you make of this situation, the Songko issue? Uh, there are three things to be said of this drama. 
First, Sonko's has been a house built on impunity. The problem with impunity is when you lose favor with your protectors, then it comes crumbling. And when it comes crumbling, then everything around it falls on you uh, squarely. And that is the problem. Uh, Sonko has operated on, on impunity. As way back as when I was appointed ombudsman in 2012, and I came out with a list indicating those who, in my view, were ought not to be cleared to vie, and Sonko was one of them. For one week, Sonko was demonstrating in front of my office with the full protection of the police, uh, with a myriad of people and calling me names and all that. And that impunity has gone on for some time. That has been the problem. When you operate with impunity, then you do things that you do not stop to think about. The second issue is that um, I think Governor Sonko has been a bit reckless with his speeches and actions lately, uh, including saying things which amount to uh, criminal offenses. But someone did not remind him that in law, even if we committed an offense with you, when I say we committed it, it cannot be used against you. It can only be used against me. You can only confess against yourself, not against somebody else. So the more he spoke, the more he was digging deeper. But that said, I will never support uh, any process that does not respect the Constitution and due process. And therefore, Governor Sonko, like any other Kenyan or non-Kenyan, is entitled to due process of the law. Even when, in the height of impunity, the government refused to obey orders in respect of Dr. Miguna Miguna and people are so, like Sonko are celebrating, it is not in my place to celebrate when uh, the same war befall him. I, like any other uh, serious uh, lawyer, must insist that Governor Sonko gets his due process in court. Okay. Governor Mutua? Napoleon Bonaparte, uh, or Bonaparte, depending on where you're coming from, once said that uh, you stop a revolution at the beginning, not at the end. And uh, when I was growing up, we used to be told uh, the secret to surviving is that uh, when somebody shoots, you duck. And number two, when you're in a hole, you stop digging. When I look at my brother Sonko, who resides, you know, is one of my people in Machakos, uh, I'm seeing something that has been left to perpetuate over a period of time. And I think he was misled to think that he can get away with anything because he's been behaving the same way, yeah. he's been doing the same things, he's been talking the same way for a period of time. And he's been rewarded, not only by the state, but he's only also been rewarded by the voters, who don't seem to care as long as it's Sonko. He can get away with anything. So what is happening is that, uh, you know, to quote Malcolm X, uh, you know, the chickens are coming home to roost. And uh, somebody here in the papers was talking about reminding us of Michuki who said, if you rattle a snake, you have to be ready to, to be beaten. So I look at Sonko and I'm thinking about, he's just the face of Kenya. Yeah. He's the face of what and who we are. We have let him continue digging the hole for himself. And uh, I think his friends would have been able, especially the friends who are encouraging him, would have been able to tell him that you're not following the law and that you're going to get into trouble. But just to, to go with what my colleagues here have said, it is important that to remember that he's innocent until proven guilty yeah. and that he should not be mistreated. He should be treated properly. He should be given uh, his rights. Yeah. If it's bail, if it's whatever, he should be treated with the dignity, you know, the right to be defended by his, the lawyers of his choice. That is his right. Yeah. And as long as he's innocent, he's going to still, as long as he's not yet been convicted, he's still innocent mm. until that time. How do we bust this impunity bubble that some politicians seem to have created around themselves? Because we're seeing a situation where they get away with it for so long that mm -hmm. by the time now they're being held to account, it's the electorate who feel mm -hmm. that this is our person being victimized mm -hmm. because they don't support so-and-so or so-and-so. How do we bust that impunity bubble within the political class? I mean, it's the same problem we've had with corruption for a long time. You know, people are just led to continue. Uh, this is, I mean, I was laughing yesterday when I saw the NCIC, uh, you know very well what I'm talking about, yeah. uh, started now to rear its head and say we're going to have a list of shame and all this. What do you mean a list of shame? Some of these things are so direct. I mean, we've had people like Senator Mudama in the past uh, issue very derogatory and very uh, tough words against other communities. We've had other leaders. But what has happened to them? I mean, it's just been a slap in the hand, come, let's talk about it, back and forth. But when somebody 
uh, it does something that can burn this country. When you go back to 2007, 2008, when we nearly killed you know, and ruined Kenya, those people need action taken against them immediately. You know, uh, we usually say in my language, I think uh, my good senator from Kiambu, I think it's the same in Kikuyu, that uh, when a dog misbehaves, uh, you smack it from where it is, it is misbehaved, you know what I mean? You mm -hmm. don't wait and smack it six months later. Yeah. You know, and it's the same thing we used to be told uh, when we were disciplining children. You know, so that's our main problem. Our agencies have basically failed us completely. Yeah. And they cannot say that it is a due process, it is a law, it is all these things. It's lack of commitment. They have waited for too long. Yeah. And uh, at the end, you know, NCIC Chair Samuel Kobia, in that when he was naming the list of shame, first of all, is that even enough? Just putting them on the list of shame. We've seen Joanna Ngeno, Imurua Dekir. We've also seen uh, Silvana Sosoro being mentioned. And we've also seen Simbarati on that list. And even Mike Song himself. Is that enough? Well, first, it's not enough, and I'll explain. But let me go back to your original question. How do we stop this cycle of impunity? The first thing is to remind everyone that unlike other torts or wrongs, there is no limitation period for criminal offenses. Mm -hmm. They can wait 10 years, they can wait 20, 50. But when it comes calling, you cannot say it has taken too long. And therefore, when anyone is charged um, with offenses that they are late to have committed, the electorate and anyone else should not complain, provided they are given due process. And once we see a number of people charged in that manner, then even other politicians and other people who are operating with impunity will be reminded that my day will come and they will desist. Having said that, uh, Trevor, you will remember that I was actually a commissioner with NCIC. Uh, as ombudsman, I am entitled to be one of the commissioners. So for five years, I sat in that commission. And I can tell you that... Um, that is why I was looking at him yes. when I was talking. <laughs> because he was there. Yes. And he may, he, yes. He's, a, but yes. he's partly to blame. Yes. <laughs> I can <laughs> tell you that for the five years that we were there, yeah. I tried what I could in terms of the need to prosecute. The NCIC has been shy of prosecutions. Very shy. And especially of the political class. And that does not help. So the NCIC should move with speed. The other week we were, last week only we were here, and I was with my brother, Senator Mwaura, and even you played what he uh, said in Gidurai. Up to now, NCIC has not taken any action. They have not even commented. You know, things like that encourage others to keep speaking because they believe nothing will come to them. And that is wrong. NCIC must act swiftly, okay? Because there's sufficient, there's sufficient cushioning, both in the Constitution and in the Act. But secondly, the idea of naming and shaming is something I encouraged while I was there, uh, but they did not pick it up. I'm happy they picked it up now. It is not sufficient, but it is a good foundation, except that even in naming and shaming, you must also follow due process. You know, you cannot just wake up and put Trevor's uh, name in the list of shame, and you have not asked Trevor, this is what you are late to have done, mm -hmm. and what is your response? The speed with which they including some of the names like Simbarati and others clearly shows because it was the previous day. They have not accorded them that opportunity. You must call them and you must tell them this is what's alleged of you. If it amounts to a criminal offense, prosecute. Yeah. But if it does not amount to a criminal offense, but clearly it is a breach of integrity, then you can include them in the uh, list of shame. Okay. Uh, you know, I, I think, uh, uh, Trevor, this, this starts, with, um, starts with our hygiene. As, as you know, political hygiene, as as as, um, as, as a people, especially leaders, and um, the the first point of call, if you ask me, is uh, is in uh, what you'd call dubbed the system, because you see, if you look at all those names that you're talking about, uh, at one point or the other, they were speaking for somebody who was in uh, in a position of privilege, or some, so somebody who was in power then, and it is at one point or the, or, or the other, right. And, 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 and okay for that person to say those kind of things, do those kind of things, because at that time he is untouchable because he's saying them when he is affiliated or connected to somebody. And then it grows, it's a monster, it grows. And then finally, uh, you find that uh, it's, it, it's, a, it's a culture, it's a trend, and there are specific people who are known that when he sits or stands behind a microphone, that this is the kind of thing that he's going to speak. I mean, they, they, have, uh, they, they already have an identity. And not until uh, the time when he's speaking from the right, uh, wrong side, 
of, 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 of the divide, is he going to be apprehended? And, and I think that's one of the things that we have to deal with. And, and I've heard what my colleagues have said uh, about NCIC, but I think NCIC has been a total letdown, an absolute letdown to, 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 to our constitutional implementation. Because that, that's, that's precisely, and remember, uh, the formation of NCIC as uh, Otende Amolo says, I mean, this is in the backdrop of, of the violence that we had in 2007. And, and, and the expectation was that they were going to be taking radical action. That, that indeed, what led to the deaths of those thousands of Kenyans well, 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 started, with, started with utterances, people saying and doing those kind of things. And, and so I think one of the strongest uh, forces against this kind of thing should have been in NC, NCIC by now. Uh, and then also, I, I want to uh, say to uh, our, our good friends like uh, the DCI and, and others, you know, for goodness sake, yes, it is okay right now. You, are, you, you seem to be take, taking stand action, but, but why does it wait for this, for, for, for this long? Why? Why does it wait for this long? Why can't action be taken when it is due? And, and, and I think um, unless, unless this is uh, corrected, uh, Trevor, you're go just going to end this cycle. Yeah. Then you're going to find a new radical uh, who is saying that I'm identified now in this couple with so and so. Then he'll start saying things, and everybody else will be watching and saying that he's helping us. You get, he's helping our, our, our side. Yeah. But the time, by the time he crosses the other side, the country is burning. So, so I, I think we, we, we have to uh, completely uh, clean up yeah. uh, our, our act okay. and our hygiene. Governor Mutua, is NCIC shy or simply unable to act? Are they empowered enough to act? Are they empowered? I just think there are people sleeping on their job, uh, plainly. Even this shame, his list of shame is a big uh, joke. I mean, we've known people who've really incited people in this country. All over, many senior politicians who are not in this list of shame. I'm surprised they're only naming a few people. We've had people who've actually been arrested and locked up, uh, who actually have court cases of uh, utterances, utterances against other communities. Why aren't they in the list of shame? It's a big joke. This is a banded solution. They're trying to come out and say uh, some, something has woken them up from their slumber. And as taxpayers, and I respect them, I respect, uh, you know, Mr. Kobia, I respect Professor, I respect the people there. Yes, but they have been sleeping on the job. They are getting hefty salaries. Yeah. They are riding in the back left of big, big guzzlers being fueled by the government of Kenya, by the people tax, by our taxpayers' money. But what have you done about it? Uh, for me, I just think that uh, either they wake up or yeah. we get a more robust team yeah. of people who can really deal with these issues because it is my future they are ruining. It's the future of my young kids. Yeah. It's the future of our children. You know, some of them, uh, they don't care about that. They have moved on. They have the establishment. But it's the future of my people okay. that I care about. All right. Honorable Tienda, you know, on the front page of the standard, I see the Security Committee Chair Paul Koinange announced that Parliament's willingness to take drastic measures to criminalize divisive talk ahead of next year's poll. How practical is that? Yes, I've seen that. Um, and I saw that they formed a subcommittee with my friend, Honorable Peter Kaluma, to look into that possibility. Uh, it's an interesting one, and I will wait to see uh, how it comes. Because it's a very thin line. You know, uh, the freedom of expression that is allowed under Article 33 of the Constitution, but which has limitations, including hate speech, and including advocacy of hatred um, is one that is very important. And you want people to express themselves freely. But you do not want them to incite ethnic violence or to incite class wars or to incite others against others. But it's a very thin line when you start criminalizing particular uh, you know, descriptions like hustler, as I heard some people say, or dynasty. That is a political problem that must be dealt with politically. Mm. It is a problem that we cannot allow to germinate because it will cause us immense problem. But it's a very delicate line because criminalization of certain words can itself be retrogressive. So we must walk that path very narrowly and very carefully and we'll wait to see uh, when it comes. Mm. But secondly, uh, you know, drawing from this idea of list of shame and all. Uh, you remember when I was on Butman, I started this. And every year in our annual report, we would put the list of outstanding public officials who had done good things for the citizens. But we also had a list 
of shame of public officials who had acted with impunity and refused or did certain things that were bad. Several of them, of course, took me to court, and that's how it should be. Any entity that is left at peace, that is not challenged, is an entity that is not doing its work. And part of the problem that I'm seeing is that the institutions that were created in the 2010 Constitution, which were independent institutions and were supposed to do certain things, while many of them, I think, in the initial lot tried, and we can go through the whole list, in the subsequent lot, there appears to have been an immense interference with the selection process, and the result has been uh, taming those institutions. Mm. In fact, even by definition, Reverend Kobia is a good man, but he's a reverend. <laughs> you don't take a reverend, for example, to lead a war, <laughs> because they are given to <laughs> peace and prayers and stuff like that. The hate speech and the kind of things we have here needs the ruthlessness that we should be seeing people challenging the leader of that body virtually every other day, including being taken to court. If you can do one, two, or three years in a body like this and no one challenge you, then there's a problem. <laughs> well, thank you. The yeah. issue here then is the threshold of incitement. How do you decide that that statement is insightful, this other one is not? Well, uh, maybe I take that a little back from what um, uh, Honorable Tienda said, and I would have wanted to hear uh, what, what are the consequences? What, 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 what's the outcome finally of, of being on the list of shame? Because, um, uh, you know, I mean, we, we, have, we have hardcore fellows here, mm -hmm. uh, you know, who putting him on a list of shame. Uh, some of them uh, rejoice and, and, and they glorify themselves yeah. on being on those lists. You know, you've heard some of them say, saying that, uh, you know, that, that they are hardcore because they have been jailbirds. And, and uh, you know, I mean, I mean so, so, so it's probably more of, uh, of, of uh, you know, getting more publicity. But, but are there consequences of being on that list? If, if there's a list, then it has no, no, no effect. Actually, but, yeah. I, I just want to respond to you, and that's very important. Yeah. Um, when I was on Bootsman, one of the things I pushed the most, uh, because as I told you in 2012, we had uh, you know, the list of people who had actually been convicted and ought not to be cleared. Yes. And when I shared that list with the IBC, and I had gotten most of the names from ESCC, the first people to run away from me was ESCC. They then said, no, 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 no. Uh, for us, it is not our business to clear people. The IBC took the view that it is the voter who determines suitability. And that is why we are where we are. So then I pushed for the idea that, that in that case, we need to have a body that can prepare a list of shame with consequence, that can determine that you are unfit to hold office. One of the good things in the BBI is that it now has that proposal, that the Ombudsman office can actually, having gone through the due process, declare that you are unfit to hold office oh, okay. and with the consequence that you cannot okay. be elected. I, I was not ceding my, I was not ceding my, my, my speaking opportunity to you. <laughs> you asked the question. Ask question that. So you, 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 are, you, are, you, are, you are explaining in, in 30 minutes, my friend. So anyway, what, what I wanted to, to, to then understand, because, because uh, Trevor, yeah. how many times have you seen a politician standing on a podium and saying, Ati, Nagoja Mukuja Munishike? Yeah, let them come and arrest me now. Yeah. You know, I mean, and, and, and you know, because we have, we, we have, we have made it, a, you know, a trend that, that when you are seen there uh, being arrested and uh, demonstrating and saying things, that's what makes you more popular. Remember, here at EACC itself, we, we had people who are being uh, apprehended, brought to EACC, and, and they would bring crowds, remember that time, mm -hmm. to, to EACC mm -hmm. outside the headquarters, yeah. and tell them to chant Muziwetu, Mutu, you know what I mean? <laughs> you get what I mean? Yeah. So, so, unless, uh, right from start to the end, that somebody knows that it is consequential, uh, once, when you do that, this is going to be the payback, and, and it bites, the, the, then you're able to distract that. And, and we have examples to borrow from. Look at what happened uh, in uh, Rwanda after, after the genocide and after the, the inquiry that has been there. People have been brought to book, yeah. seriously. And, 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 and um, I, 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 I don't want to get into very uh, deep territory, uh, Trevor, but, but even you'd ask yourself, how have we dealt with the 2007-2008 violence itself? If you are told as a journalist yourself today, or any Kenyan, you know, summarize, tell us, from the violence that rocked this country, from the criminal acts then, at that time, with people known, 
what, how would you stand probably in, 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 in a podium and tell people this is how we summarize, this, this is what happened to those that perpetrated these this crimes at that time. Yeah. You, you find that this, this is our history, it's our trend, it's our style. Yeah. Uh, this comes, you, you put it uh, in the dustbin, it, 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 it dies down, then you move to another new one, and that is what has grown and perpetuated impunity up to today. Okay. And you know, uh, just to jump into that, yeah. When, when I look at this uh, security committee chair, Paul Koinange, talk about bringing the malls. Uh, the main problem here, you'll all agree with me, is the speed at which our people are charged and convicted or let go. Because, uh, and then what? You are taken to court. You are given bail. Alafu kesi inachukua five, six years. By that time, you've been re-elected into office. That's our main problem. So part of the amendments that need to be done is what uh, my party was suggesting, even with the BBI, is that some of these cases need to end chap chap. So you say that for, uh, uh, you know, especially things that are dividing or tearing the country apart, those things within three to six months, case in Aisha. So as we mweshimiwa alikuwa anasema kujeni munishike, anaenda jela. Watu anasema haya, ni kubaya. It will happen within this year. Like in Nigeria, you go there, you have money, a uh, case in Irish, another six months, 12 months, two years, six years, eight years down the line, nothing has happened to that person. They rise and rise, 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 rise. Eventually, they may even become president yeah. with all those charges. All right. And that, 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 that is what Otiende Amolo called a due process. Yeah. My friend. <laughs> yeah, but, <laughs> you know, but you see, but you see, but you see, what I'm, 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 I'm just trying to say, Governor, mm. is that, uh, that we have uh, a system that has institutionalized that. Yes. The, 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 that it is, it is the, the trend, it is fashionable, it is the way things are done. You, you know, and I'm not saying that what you're saying is wrong. What you're saying is the absolute correct thing to do, and uh, that's how it should be. Yeah, and, that's and, why we need uh, some of these changes that we have to have in this country, because the so-called due process is really not a uh, proper process, yeah. because it is denying justice to many people, as Mahatma Gandhi would say. Yeah. So we, we have to... We have to be in a country where you know that if you are charged and you are innocent, within a very short time, you can be let go and you continue their life. But also we need to know that if you're guilty, you will be locked up and continues. Yeah. Look at the time it takes for court cases to end in the US or in the UK for that matter. And uh, you know the chicken gets uh, a scandal mm -hmm. uh, whereby IBC officials were said to have been uh, bribed. The case in England, where the guys who are said to have bribed them, went on. Those guys were convicted. They served four to five years in jail. There were reparations where they got money was taken from them. The case in Kenya, Hajafika Katikati, seven, eight years down the line, nine years down the line. So it's about due process, but it has to be due process with the word due in consideration. Yeah. You know what I mean? It is not something that is going on perpetually. Yeah. And that is the main problem we are facing in this country. The whole issue of impunity is because Utadu, because it takes a long time yeah. for things to happen. Mm -hmm. So we need to move in a speedy manner to correct these anomalies so that we have peace in this country. Otherwise, we'll tear ourselves apart come 2022. Otiende, we're also seeing the interior CS Fred Matiang after addressing a closed parliamentary committee sitting, revealing that state is planning to block the insiders from the 2022 elections. How? And is, how is that going to work? The way it would work is the way I explained to you that uh, for the first time then, uh, let me start afresh. If the IEBC was serious about its work, and this is not just the current commission, even the previous one, there are a number of politicians who would not have been cleared to vie. Because the IEBC has the constitutional authority to clear. You know, it is them who determine, uh, are you, do you fall in any of the categories of those who do not and cannot be cleared. Maybe you, have, you, you are a dual citizen, you have been bankrupt, you have been declared as unfit to hold office by any agency, and that could include parliament. Yeah. There are many parliamentary reports that had already indicted politicians as unfit to hold office, and they were subsequently mm -hmm. elected. Had the IEBC taken the position that it can actually buy you, mm -hmm. this would have been taken a lot more seriously, but they haven't. And so the alternative is to have a situation where you have a body that can actually constitutionally declare you as unfit to, have, uh, to hold office. And as I spoke to you, that's one of the proposals in the, in the draft bill. Yeah. Secondly, 
what Governor Mutua says is correct, but it should not be taken literally as, as an excuse to, you know, to squeeze due process. Due process is very important. Our problem is not the due process in terms of the court process. Our process is a societal problem. Let me tell you that the reasons that uh, you know, investigations take long in this country, first, it starts from the reporting itself. There are enough people who are so frustrated that they don't even bother to report, and I saw this. A lot of bad things happen to them, but they think that even if you report to the police, they won't act. That's the problem. Then the second level is once it's reported, the investigation. Because of the corruption level, enough of those investigators are compromised. They just don't complete the investigation in time. Yeah. Something that you take, look, look at Kemsa. I mean, and I'm seeing the story <laughs> today. 7.6 billion, we are all going to pay. Up to today, all we see is drama of those who walked in and walked out with 100 million. By now, at least some people should have been uh, you know, in that process because the parliamentary process is not a criminal process and it does not stop the criminal process from continuing. Yeah. So the investigation is a problem. Then thirdly is the question of the witnesses. Because of our corruption and the impunity, witnesses are compromised, some don't come, and even some who come to court, you come once, twice, thrice, then you get tired. Yeah. Then they accuse themselves. Sometimes we lawyers frustrate the process. When you think that there's overwhelming evidence against your client, then you employ all sorts of tactics. But when you think that there is no evidence and you want his first track, then it's now the prosecution that employ all sorts of tactics so that it can stay in court, so that their incompetence is not exposed. Then it comes to the court. So it's an entire edifice. And all this must be addressed in their context. We must just say no to impunity as a people. Okay. Senator but, but Chirake is joining but, us now. Mm. Do you want to jump in? Very yeah, I would say, you know, when talking about due process, huh? yeah. Uh, he's talked about corruption. People are afraid to go to the police because because of the state. But also because you, you have to give uh, the reality of the matter is we cannot have open-ended uh, investigations that go on forever. You can't have charges. Look at what has happened in the U.S. When was that uh, so-called terrorism act against the Capitol just the other day? If you watch news, what is happening? People have been arrested. Charges have been procured, people are being taken to court, and I can assure you within a month or two, people will be jailed. Neo story Taisha, and Americans say this is bad. Why can't we do it in Kenya? You know, why is it that in Kenya it takes forever that the judges allow the prosecutors and the, the defense lawyers to continue pushing cases back and forth? Yeah. For me, there should be, I don't know whether it's even, it should be set in stone and say, a certain case has to end within a certain period of time. Yeah. And I've said here, for example, when we went for court petitions, I don't know whether you, you had to go to court for petitions no, I didn't uh, against you. Mm -hmm. No, uh, no I, when, I didn't have to. I was... He had a landslide win. No, when he, when he, he, when he runs for governor. So when, <laughs> when, when you find... <laughs> when, 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 <laughs> when you go to court, uh, the rules are such that for an election petition, because Nwakubwa, since Nwakubwa to talk on the the rules have been set. A case has to start and end within six months. If it goes a day beyond six months of the Gazette notice, then it is thrown out. And they so, that. you know, and you fix that. Yes. So everybody goes to that. Why can't we do the same for corruption cases? Why can't we do the same for cases of impunity? Why is it that they are open-ended forever? Yeah. Because if we can do that for people who are holding on to big seats so they can ride in big cars paid for by their taxpayers, why can't we do it for them when they steal people's money? Okay. Or when? They engage in activities that can ban this country. All right. Senator Cherarge is now joining us. He's a bit late on this. But, uh, Senator, if you're still, you can hear me there. We're talking about the issues facing Sonko. We're also talking about the bubble of impunity that has been created. But let's start first with the issues that are facing Sonko now and the list of shame that was given out by NCIC. What do you make of that situation? Thank you, Trevor. And uh, I've been following conversation. And I must say, uh, in an ideal situation, is what my colleagues have been saying. On the issue of NCIC, I think NCIC has uh, transformed itself into a political outfit because I saw the other day, uh, if you see, there is a proposal trying to criminalize the word hustler. 
uh, versus dynasty, which was not the intention of the ideology that we believe in. I think what they are doing to Governor Songo is just pure political witch hunt because I think what he, he said in Machakos, and there are some people who are hell-bent in trying to block him from uh, campaigning for senatorial candidate for the United Democratic Alliance. And uh, all these issues are just public relations exercise. The NCIC uh, have been afraid. And you remember uh, a, few, a few weeks ago, I, I, I challenged the NCIC to have a discussion with the president after he, he, he mentioned that two tribes have ruled for long in, in uh, Mudavadi's uh, mother's funeral which was also uh, very dangerous. You had also what he, what he said in Sagana Lodge uh, a few weeks ago or a few days ago about uh, uh, some issues that were very uncomfortable. So when you see NCIC that is very selective and you can see even the number of politicians that have been taken to court by NCIC, all of them have uh, an affiliation to Isaac and the David president. So looking at Governor Songo, what Governor Songo is going through is purely political witch hunt. The NCIC, I saw that the report when they were releasing the report of list of shame that they do not have, uh, have enough teeth to bite. And therefore, the only thing they could do is release the list of, uh, of shame of uh, three MPs and I think uh, ex-governor of Nairobi. And, and when you see the NCIC are to reserve that uh, we need to amend the law, we don't have enough powers, uh, the NCIC Act should be amended so that we can do our work. Yet, what the cases that are in court, most of them are, are come from specific uh, people who have, uh, have a specific affiliation. Yeah. We would have expected the NCIC to be uh, very, very, very impartial, very neutral. You saw even an, um, um, an, an ODM uh, ward MCA from, is it Condele Ward in Kisumu County, making very uncomfortable comments. Uh, the party leader of ODM was sitting there. The NCIC have seen that video, but no one has done anything. To ensure that uh, to, to ensure that such statements or such individuals have been brought to book. Yeah. Uh, finally, is that uh, finally Trevor is that NCIC should not wait until there is a public uproar so that they can arrest or prosecute. And you can see my colleagues have been saying, and some individuals have been saying, Munishike, Munishike, and just the NCIC swings it to uh, uh, action. They take you to court, and then that is it. But Gerard, I'll give you a bit more time because it's not exactly factual what you're saying. Simba Rati, for example, is no, has no affiliation to the deputy president. But, but, but Trevor, in all intents and purposes, it is because of the public uproar that uh, Simba Rati and uh, Silvana Sosora have been, uh, been summoned to appear before the NCIC because many people have been complained. But I'm saying it is, it is when you say... It is not factual. It is not true because most, I've said, most of the cases that have been taken to court by NCIC, most of the individuals are either associated or have affiliation or support this except the deputy president, including myself. We have been taken to court by NCIC on frivolous charges. So what I can say, the, the separate issue, or being one of the people, of course, being a member of ODM, is somebody who has been taken to court is only uh, a drop in the auction. But when you look at the cases, that have been taken forth, that are facing prosecution, that are being prosecuted in court by NCIC. Most of them, uh, Trevor, most of them are individuals that are, are from, come from one political affiliation, one-sided. Even when I saw the NCIC commissioner, I think uh, if my memory serves me right, uh, Okundi, the other day, uh, coming up and talking about the criminalization of the word uh, Asla. And yet, we, we, I thought what should be criminalizing in this country is talking about tribes. I thought tribes is much more sensitive than even talking about uh, the issue of mentioning uh, the word hustler. So when you look at the, all these cases that are before court, and my friends in you know that, most of these cases have specific particular for political affiliation. And therefore, NCNC, just like DCI and EACC, have been really organized in a particular way to fight political expediency works. Okay. Senator Omatangi, yes. what is your comment? Do you agree with Gerard? <laughs> well, uh, probably. Okay. Um, I had my own reservations also on uh, the, the question of trying to criminalize uh, an expression or a term or a word that is uh, defined clearly in English language, you know, in the dictionary. You know, I mean, the, the word hustler is there. So uh, I don't know the context in wh under which you'd claim criminalize the use of that word. Uh, maybe that, that, that's a test of ground if, if, if one is, is, is expressing themselves. I think it would be very, very uh, difficult to say that you 
criminalize the, the, the word, uh, you know, or the expression hustler or the dynasty. They're there. I, I think it is it is uh, the substance of then what follows, or what those that, that, that follow the different affiliations do. And, and uh, we can individualize responsibility. Yeah. Other than just generalize and say that we are criminalizing the use of this term, why don't you go down to the person, what they've said, what they've done, and the consequences of it, and then let, let them pay for it. It's, it's as simple as that. But otherwise, you know, uh, wallowing and, and trying to grope in, you know, in, a, in, in a wide space such that you, you, you're you not uh, taking definitive action against certain actions, yeah. then that's why you find that you find this, this uh, that kind of move to, to criminalize uh, probably those 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 expressions or the words. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think I want to buy into uh, Senator uh, Charagay's uh, you know, uh, thought, thought line. Uh, he, he must have his own reasons. I, I think I think differently uh, that, that there is uh, there is uh, a certain group th that is necessarily being uh, targeted. I don't think that's the way I see it. I see it this way, as, as I said before, that we have had general reluctance, yeah. you, you know, an abdication of responsibility by the NCIC and other agencies of government who are supposed to take action across the board yeah. and, and ensure that uh, we have a neat uh, nation, that the, the, the atmosphere is, is, is correct, that people can go into politics knowing that politics is supposed to be a decent uh, engagement yeah. and that you don't, you don't uh, find yourself suddenly above the law because the, you have climbed certain ladders in leadership or in responsibility so that when, once you gain the title of a governor, once, once you are called a party leader, once you are called a deputy president or a president or whatever, then that suddenly you have found yourself with privileges that allow you yeah. or people who follow you to do and say things that are uh, injurious or harmful to uh, our well-being as a society and against our constitution. I think that is why we have failed yeah. and uh, what we should, why we should be pointing the blame is on this uh, knee-jerk reaction when, when you find that things now have run overboard, that you find that go and rush and get Trevor. This is what he said yesterday, because now it looks like things are starting to get bad. Yeah. That, 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 that is what is ailing us. The, the lack of a standard whereby we say that you'll be held responsible uh, for this and, 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 and that. And uh, Otienda Molo said uh, that, that um, you see, for example, for criminal charges, uh, there's no expiry date. Uh, you know, maybe that's why they say the law is an ass. But, uh, but uh, given, even those who did those things uh, way before, if, yeah. if it's time to clean up, then let's clean up. Then mm -hmm. set the standards yeah. and ensure that uh, we, we have a, a clean slate. And there are very many. Yeah. And there are very many. You see, I'm listening to my good senator, and I think we need to get to a place in this country whereby we don't just look at things from just a political perspective, depending on where we are standing. There's some things that are just outright wrong. Yeah. Uh, so for him to say that this is a witch hunt based on politics, uh, and it is a witch hunt of people who support the deputy president, then the question also comes in. You have to ask yourself, why is it then that the people who support the deputy president have also been very vocal in saying things that can tear this country apart? Why is it that he attracts people and he encourages them in his meetings to say things while he is there that are viewed as things that can divide this country? So, you know, it's, it's a state of where you are. And I want to tell the good senator that, you know, at times we were discussing earlier on about impunity. There's a, there's a sense of impunity in some areas in this country, political affiliations, where they think they can get away with anything because they'll brand it as political witch hunt. When you commit a crime, when you divide a country, when you do things that are not right, then you have to realize that uh, there's a problem. If, if you look, for example, uh, the people who have been mentioned, been taken to court, have been questioned, they cut across all, all political parties. Yeah. They cut across all political affiliations. That's a problem. I agree with uh, my good friend, Senator Matangi, Dr. Matangi, that uh, the issue of trying to criminalize the word dynasty and hustler is, is just desperate. You know, you don't. You know, it's a political thing, fight it politically. Uh, I think the problem is uh, the interpretation. You know, they are afraid that uh, the interpretation is going their way, but here I can help them because, you know, I know how Swahili works. Yeah. You know, Ngeli is like Swahili. On a key v, uh, what do you call a doctor in Swahili, in English? 
daktari mm -hmm. or do you call her hospital in Swahili hospitali so what do you call a hustler in Swahili somebody told me hasara maybe that's a, that's a problem <laughs> so so you know so um so th those are games that you should play politically, yeah. but not try to ban. So we've got many examples we can give them of how to deal with the hustler menace without having to criminalize uh, okay. words that are in the English language. What do you, what do you make of the uh, senator's statement? Senator Cherigay is simply wrong. But uh, my good friend Senator Cherigay must have woken up late. So he has taken us back where we started. <laughs> so I will only say very little about this. First, what he says is not true. Um, uh, that there's any question of targeting William Samoe Ruto's side. Because in any event, uh, NCIC has always been in this action. And for the longest time, it was Jubilee, you know. <laughs> and then there was NASA. And uh, so at that time, in fact, we'd have complained that it's the NASA guys who are being targeted. But even that time, my own view was that anybody who breaches the law, it does not matter which side you belong to. However, it must also be said that William Samoe's Ruto's side seems to attract a disproportionate number of leaders with criminal tendencies. Look at the standard only, I mean, as an example, without naming, page 2, page 6, page 18, page 20. All those pages are pages with leaders who are affiliated to William Ruto's side and with criminal issues. You know, so if that is the case, then you cannot blame the people who are trying to enforce the law. You must blame what is it that attracts these people to you. But lastly, just on this, the hustler thing, and as we had said, you know, and I said here two weeks ago, the definition of hustler, the def dictionary definition of hustler is a person who obtains by deceitful or illicit means, a person who practices theft or swindling, you know, a person who misrepresents one's ability in order to deceive. All those things are already criminal. You don't even need to criminalize the one because the act and the practice itself even as Dr. Mutua says, it's called Hasara. <laughs> it's already criminal anyway. So the, the consequences can be dealt with. What we don't want to encourage is the idea of raising a class war, a perceived class war, that will actually destabilize everything that we know as a nation. Yeah. Gerard yes. I'll give you a chance to respond. Uh, uh, thank you, Trevor. And, and it is shocking that uh, my brother, uh, Lanet Senior, the other day, he just received uh, senior counsel. Uh, my brother, uh, MP, said that uh, that the people who support the yes, deputy yes. president are people who have criminal tendencies. I thought it is very clear that uh, when you are not a judge in a court of law, you have not been convicted of any <laughs> case, then you are still innocent until proven killed. I think this is just political uh, uh, supremacy and political uh, witch hunt because all these leaders, and in fact, I have just mentioned an ODM uh, MCA. I didn't know that he had transformed to support DP because he just said those words in presence of Raila Odinga. It is just a few days that he has ungazetted military within Condela and they are ready to deal with anybody. Which other worse words can you say about such event? I have not seen uh, uh, Odiende Amolo condemning, condemning uh, such, uh, such co comments. I have seen many leaders, even in ODM rallies, even during the BBI, threatening everybody who opposed. Uh, does it mean that uh, Raila Odinga has been associating with criminal uh, criminal leaders that have tendencies? So let us not lie to Kenyans because it is convenient and uh, it is convenient to lie to Kenyans for political gain. So what I want to urge my colleagues is that we should be asking the NCIC to be impartial in terms of its uh, work and to work within the law, rather than uh, pinpointing fingers that individuals that belong to certain uh, political affiliation are uh, being, because if you see in all, and I've indicated, just look at the record that NCIC, the individuals that have been arrested, most of them, most of them, uh, Trevor, are people who are either have affiliation to Jesus and the David president. Secondly, have you noticed that anybody who, who opposes either BBI or either have soft spots towards political affiliation, the, the DCI, the EACC. Do you mean Governor Sogo, that the government the, the other day just realized that he had made uh, or violated the law? The government has all the intelligence machinery. The government has all the initiative machinery that we are talking about that they can even charge anybody. They know the secrets of anybody. Does it mean because Governor Sogo the other day uh, were against BBI or anti government, and then the other day the government realized that he had a criminal record or he, had, he needed to be arrested because of the violation of the law. 
So I think what we are just saying in simple terms is that the NCIC, just like DCR and EACC, have just been uh, weaponized for political fight. And when you look at the issue of Asela, this is more of a principle and ideology that now going into the future, we need to have a bottom-up approach. It is not a class war. And it is so sad that leaders of magnitude, including my, my brother, who is the chapter of my Leo, who intends to be the president of this country, yeah, wants yeah. to tell us to have a conversation about tribes. The, the, the reasoning and ideology of Asla is to have a tribeless conversation. It is not about class war. It is not us versus them. It is not Asla versus them. What we are just saying is that it is a tight time in this country that we need to have the people of Mkokoteni, Mamamboga, people in white-collar jobs, the rich and the poor, to sit in the same table and discuss the issues of governance, issues of development, and many other issues. But when you see a party leader, person who needs to read the, the country, saying, no, it is not important to have a, a word that unites, uh, that is a tribeless conversation. Let's have a word of having tribal chiefs. And, and I think that is where we go wrong, uh, we go wrong, Trevor. Yeah. And I want my colleagues that uh, you don't need to, 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 to fight the deputy president in that certain way. You should just be busy selling uh, uh, your, your, your manifest and agenda to Kenya so that you can be elected. Uh, and I'm surprised uh, on a lighter note that, 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 that the last time I left Mamatang before recess, he was not a doctor. So I'm surprised now <laughs> if the doctor need to tell us which doctor it is, whether it's academic or medical. But that is beside the point. But what I want to mention as leaders is that let us. Uh, handle this issue and be objective. Let us call out the NCIC to give us the results regardless. And I have just put across and I can see everybody is running away. The president did mention two tribes. Does it mean the two tribes do not need to run for president? I thought that, that my brother should be advocating that anybody who wants to run for president should be look at the content, the capacity, the ability. The governor Butua is there. He wants to run for president. Should we look to him as a camper, or should we look to him as a person who has a capacity and ability? Do we allow the president to rack a mock and say, no, the two tribes have left for long. Let us now allow other tribes. Is that not separating Kenyans? Is that not being failing to be the, the symbol of the national unity? Okay. Those are things that as leaders we need to call out. Okay. Dr. Matang. Yes. <laughs> Very briefly before uh, I take you know, Okay, first, uh, uh, I wanted to start from where, uh, you know, when, when Yotienda Molo was uh, describing and reading from uh, his, his uh, dictionary on the definition of hustler, yeah. I thought he was reading from one interpreted in CIA, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, <laughs> but, but I've, I've seen his, uh, his definitions are, are pretty uh, correct anyway. <laughs> And I think that's why we need to start from because you know it's a, it's a term that's gaining currency yeah. in 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 in, 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 uh, in in our world and in our country. And I think we, we need to be very careful how we apply that that, that term. So that um, uh, indeed, like my colleagues have said, it doesn't uh, seem to simply interpret to mean us versus them or or, or we against them and uh, the haves and haves not. I think that, that's a, a very thin line that we, we must observe. Then, um, uh, secondly, I, I want to urge my, my brother, uh, Senator Chariot, because we want to fight this thing and make sure that we win it. Win it so, so that we, people can take responsibility for what they're supposed to do constitutionally. Let's remove the politics from, uh, the, from uh, ensuring that, as I said earlier, that hygiene within our political uh, exercise yeah. is, 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 is neat. And then lastly, uh, to tell my colleague, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> Council uh, Chair Gay, uh, that, um, you know, the, the fact that he's not seen me injecting people <laughs> <laughs> in, a, in a dispensary in a, or in a clinic in Nandi <laughs> does not mean that I'm not a doctor. Okay. And, uh, and uh, he can come, we can share a lot much more. All right. But uh, yes, uh, I'm Dr. Omatangi. Okay, I have to take a quick break here. When we come back, we still talk about a few more issues. <laughs> CI has passed the BBI bill, of course. There's a bit of jitters there. People saying that how much public participation was there. And a few of your responses here. I see a lot of them by the Altrice squeeze in some of them right after this break.
All right, thank you for staying with Daybreak. There's a lot of your feedback. I'll be reading them in just a bit. Let me, but let me get a quick response from uh, Governor Mutua to Senator Chirar Gay on this issue where he feels you're pushing the narrative that their side of the political divide is a bit errant. So no. to speak. <laughs> <laughs> to find a I, I like, I like to I like to thank uh, Senator uh, for reminding Kenyans that I'm running for president because we need youthful <laughs> leaders to take over this country who can really uh, get things moving chop chop so that yeah. we can have the economy growing that people are not mis misled. You know, uh, it is important to know that criminal criminal liability is personal. It is not uh, collective. collective. Yeah. And so if I'm looking at today's newspaper. My good colleague here, uh, Dr. here, talked about even the mentions. You look, for example, if I may be allowed, uh, the page one of, uh, of the standard is talking about Songo. And it's the same with the other papers. Uh, issues of Songo is affiliated to uh, the deputy president. You move quickly to page what? Six. Uh, page six, we've got South, South Mugirango, MP Silverne Sosoro. Uh, we've got Emuria Dick. Uh, Bikir mentioned on other matters. You move quickly to page what? 18. To page 18. You also find uh, you also find Jaguar risking jail for defying a uh, court ruling. You move swiftly to the following to page 20. There is an issue of Jumwa and a murder case. There is also the issue of David Gekaria about uh, you know issues of land land fraud, and it continues every other page. There's a legislator or a senior person affiliated to one camp of, uh, of the political debate of this country yeah. who are in the papers. I didn't write these papers. You know, it's a nation, it's in the star, it's everywhere. These are people who are following uh, somebody. I remember when I was growing up, record Nambu, Fata Nyuki Kule Nini? Asali, I'm a Fata Ile Kitwingindu Pate Nini? So, no, no. so maybe people are affiliated to people of their kind. Maybe some people attract yeah. a certain type of people. And these are, this is the reality in the papers. So uh, my good friend, uh, Senator, I understand what you are talking about. And I totally agree with you that we cannot have leadership in this country based on tribal affiliation, saying that because you are born of this tribe, you cannot become. But also, we must realize that we are in a country whereby people have to feel a sense of inclusiveness. And you have to ask yourself, why is it that feeling is coming up now, that it is becoming too much? Uh, and you can also, you know, there's also, it's called public space. When you're talking to somebody, you're okay. When you start getting too close to that person, you start infringing on their public space. It's called interpersonal communication. You get too close, they'll punch you. You know, unless they're, you're a lover, you're not supposed to get that close. Maybe they are getting too close to the comfort of Kenyans yeah. in terms of what we want as a country, where we say we want inclusivity, we want people who can be able to lead this country to the next front, not based on tribal links, yeah. but then we have to live in a country where other communities are saying, what about us? Okay. Why weren't they saying what about us uh, five years ago? Why weren't the rest of the communities not saying what about us when they elected uh, Uhuru immediately after Mwai Kibaki? Why is there a sudden realization of why, what about us? Maybe there's been too much of a push. Yeah. sana, sana, sana. Mpaka now it's becoming, uh, it's become a turn off okay. uh, from a political perspective. Because I just <coughs> went around to Kambani the other day. Yeah. And every speaker, even chiefs, even uh, women in the village are saying we can't have this country being ruled by two communities. Why are people starting to feel that way? It's the same thing you find in Kisi. It's what Arat was talking about. It's everywhere in this country. Why is it? Because I think the Hasla Nation, as they, they, they call themselves, the Hasla Group, has, has pushed too much. And I think it's backfiring on them. Okay. Honorable Tiende, before I bring in Cheregui. Uh, Senator Cheregui has, has repeated this twice, and he's wrong. He said that uh, he does not understand why NCIC has not questioned the president because he uttered words about two tribes and all. NCIC's focus is cohesion. To say that two tribes out of 44 have, cannot rule this country for 58 years and still want 10 more is to actually cause cohesion rather than non-cohesion. Mm -hmm. So NCIC should actually praise President Kenyatta for that reality because that's what it is. It's the same thing. The idea of rotational leadership enhances cohesion even at the most local level 
even in my own constituency, even if you come to a location, you must always find that if a chief comes from this particular subclan, then the next, the next time you have an opportunity, it must go to another subclan and like that. If one subclan retains it forever, then it causes disharmony with the others. And the same thing, even the question of the seat of MC, of MP, of governor, and at all other levels. The reason, for example, we even have affirmative action, why we even have special seats for women, is because we said we cannot have an election where always it's only men who are elected. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we must find a different way of bringing women to the table. So even in this case, even whether it's democratic or not, that only two tribes have been uh, elected and are in danger of continuing to be elected, we must find a different way of bringing others to the table. Okay. That enhances cohesion. Okay. And let me now come to the CIA issue, since you mentioned it. Yeah. Um, and you already posed the question that some people are saying, how come they passed it so quickly and there was no public participation? Last week, oh. on Thursday, I was here, and I pointed out the advert where the Sierra County Assembly had put out an advert of how they were going to be in all the sub-counties. And what they did, which I thought was ingenious and others should follow, is that they broke into teams. So rather than have one team go to all the six sub-counties, they had different teams go to each sub-county on the same day. And I can confirm to you that, for example, the sub-county of Rarieda, they came there, and although I was not personally there, my entire team was there, and they gave their views. So there was already public participation physically uh, through, uh, through email and through letters. Yeah. So I am proud of my county, Siaya, for being the first one and proactively to pass this BBI thing and we get it over with. It is my view that we need all the counties to deal with this question and return their verdict to the speakers yeah. so we can get over with this issue. Okay. And it does not matter whether you support or not. Let's just get it over with so that we stop this incessant and endless debate. All right. And uh, let me bring in Gerard Gay back on this. Gerard Gay, why do you read the president's statement as exclusion of the two tribes rather than inclusion of the other 40? Mm -hmm. And will Nandi be passing the BBI bill? <laughs> two quick things. One, I wish that, uh, you know, I have a problem with pronouncing the word of my friend from Marietta, is that... Uh, what we are just saying, why didn't they put the, the issue of rotational presidency in the PBI? Or is it in the PBI? Unless they have a different version of BBI, but what we have is, I thought they should have put uh, rotational presidency or rotational leadership in the BBI so that when people are passing, they are aware that the issue of rotational presidency is within the BBI, and now every Kenyan can access. But I thought, you know, it is so archaic, and it is so unfortunate listening to Governor Mutua, who intends, I don't know whether he will be in the category of people who threaten to run for presidency for their political survival. That is, we leave it to the jury to decide. But my question is, we should be advocating to have a country where even Martin Luther Jr. King, that the skin color would not matter, but the content. And that is why I've insisted that to, to be a breeder of this country, to be the president of this country, we should look at the capacity and ability and why is it that when we brought a conversation of hustler movement or the hustler agenda, these people have interpreted to mean hustler versus anybody. We didn't say hustler versus anybody. And therefore, I want to ask my colleagues that uh, we need to desist if we, you are, they have realized that every Kenyan, every asshole, and every Kenyan is now ready to discuss the issue of economic empowerment as opposed as to their tribal affiliation. So I, 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 I'm, I'm so, it is so disappointing and I wish, uh, at the end, our should, uh, should, be, should be very categorical that they have introduced the uh, rotational presidency within the BPI framework, and, and we would have seen that. So I, I want to ask, and the reason, another aspect that I want to, to reply to is that, uh, why is it that the president said, the, and, and, and the NCIC should praise him? Why should the, the, the president be praised, yet he is a symbol of national unity? Why, why would he say that more tribes and two tribes have led this country more than enough, more than other tribes? And I think that is why even Senator Kimani Wamatangi, who comes from uh, Mount Kenya region, would be very uncomfortable because they have the numbers and, and, and they would want to use their numbers to get into executive authority of this country. I don't think it is very comfortable. So the issue I was saying the president, the NCIC should have a discussion with the president is because that statement is coming from somebody who should be the symbol of national unity, we should not be making statements that uh, disunite the country more than unite. And therefore, 
I think the reason my brother, uh, Honorable Atienda Omolo, is, is, is talking about, Atienda Omolo, sorry, is talking about is because he just wants to appear right and to appease the president because they need BBI to be passed. <laughs> Secondly and finally, you have asked about the, whether Nandi County will pass the BBI uh, report. We, I, I've had a discussion with the speaker and a number of the MCAs, and they know the mood on the ground. BBI will flop in the Nandi County Assembly because it's not a priority now. It is not an issue that uh, these people have should have put it with the issue of help. I know in the BBI, uh, there are proposals that we have administrative proposals, we have legislative interventions, and we have issues that might go to the referendum. But looking at the context in which the BBI is being pushed through, the threats that are being issued, the intimidation, the blackmail, the bribery against MCS being told you will get card grant if you pass the BBI, then what will how, will how will the Kenyans be benefit or the Kenyans will be bribed also to pass the BBI? So in the Nandi County Assembly, looking at the boot on the ground, having a discussion with a number of MCAs, I can assure you, Trevor, that the, the fate of BBI within the prisons of Nandi County Assembly will flop. Yeah. I know the reason CIA did pass in a supersonic speed. Even I and my colleagues in uh, except Governor Mutua, there is no legislation that have been passed with supersonic speed, like the way CIA County Assembly has done. And therefore, it is surprising, it is miraculous that happened 2,000 years ago. <laughs> I was surprised that even Kenyans in CIA did not have an opportunity of digesting. I have talked to my friends who come from CIA, and they are telling me they have never seen a copy of BPI document within even their villages. So I don't know how did the MCAs participate in a public participation in a document that the public have not read, the document that the public have not digested, the public that have not given enough discussion, because in parliamentary, uh, within our legislative framework, we give between uh, 14 days or even seven days for people to digest, yeah. look at it, and be able to give their view. So I think that was a scam that was being done in Sierra County Assembly. Okay. Well, Matangin, there yes. was a meeting, by the way, in Sagana that we didn't really review, but as you're still there, you can also talk about the issue around BBI. Yes, uh, uh, yes, yes uh, my brother, <laughs> Trevor. And, you know, <laughs> uh, first I wanted to let uh, my good friend uh, <laughs> Charagay remember, I think he's forgetting that uh, within our statistics, I think they were informal, though, yeah. that uh, in CIA, uh, I think uh, it's the county with most doctors in this, in this, in this country. Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> not just doctors. <laughs> the most and, learned. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> per square capita. <laughs> <laughs> most learned per square foot. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so, uh, so the Jeragay, stop questioning the speed of reading and understanding <laughs> a document within CIA county. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, there is evidence with this uh, doctor sitting here yeah, next to us, my friend. So uh, let, let bygones be bygones. <laughs> and the same is likely to be replicated when it gets to the other areas within that environment. That's an area of landed people, my friend. <laughs> now, <laughs> but anyway, having, having said that, uh, Trevor. Yeah. You know, you notice, uh, let me make a quick comment on uh, this question of rotation of presidency, and yeah. then I, I, I'll make a brief one on Sagana. <clears throat> because um, I made my views known uh, the last time uh, about uh, rotation of presidency, but there is an important phenomena that took root in our political leadership and ascension to office since 2002 that I think we are uh, refusing to acknowledge. If you, if you look at our history since 2002, that time of... Uh, Kibaki Tosha and the Rainbow Coalition. It is now known, it is a norm, that it is no longer possible to ascend to power in this country unless you are in a coalition with other Kenyan communities who can help you together by agreement to ascend to power. It is no longer possible. Let, let me tell you, Trevor, and let no one deceive uh, anyone, either uh, Dr. William Ruto, neither uh, Alfred Mutua, or any other person, Mudavadis of this world, and anyone, that you will ascend to that position on your own. You can't. That is why Baba was coming to, 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 to Mount Kenya region. That is why he'll be going to coast and to other places. Unless you build a coalition of willing uh, people and, and, and convince them 
that you have what it takes now to lead this country. You can't do it on your own. Mm -hmm. and, and so I think we should not waste time on this debate, that there is a community here that uh, has always uh, dominated or another community. And as I said the last time, I don't even think that when the president spoke about it, that, that's what he meant. How and where will we take our democracy, meritocracy, you know, fit to hold office? How are we going then to say that even between the remaining uh, 40 tribes, that then there is one that is more suitable than the other. So, so what happens when the lawyers occupy that position? And what happens then when you have got the Luos occupying that position? Are you going to say that then eventually what you're doing in this rotation is that for number one who was president then to be president again, you have to do that after 42 years times a term of five years. I don't think it happens that way anywhere in the world. And so let's re not reduce this discussion into a mathematical or, 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 or some uh, symmetrical ar arrangement. What we are saying, and I believe that was the spirit with which the president was speaking, is that, yes, let us know that we are not a country of only two communities. That is a reality. That's a fact. And, and then as we move forward, every Kenyan is fit to hold that office. And, and, and let it be, be, be competitive, so, so, so that even in this coming election, I said here, I, I, I might be running for president myself. Don't come and tell me that I'm a Kikuyu. I'm a Kenyan, and, 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 and I'll compete with everyone else. Let everybody, everyone else who is a Kalenjin bring their papers forward. Let him run, compete against the other, other Kenyans who are interested. And if you win that presidency, by virtue of being voted by a majority of the people, then you're our president. Yeah. That's how it works. And, and so I, I think I, I would want to maintain that position, you know, so, so that even my community and anyone else who, who, who comes from where I come from does not feel intimidated yeah. that uh, going forward that they have no chance uh, to, to turn for president. Now, coming quickly, you said that we've not spoken to, to Sagana, about Sagana. And I think, yes, we held uh, our meeting in Sagana. It was a good meeting. It was a meeting where uh, we put our minds together as leaders from that community and including our people. And it is, in, it is decent, it is in order, there is nothing wrong for our community to come together and yeah. ask, as I said in our last discussion here, how do we fit in, how do we gel with the rest of the communities in this country so that we can have a nation of all, where we are also included. And, and when it comes to discussions about where do we place ourselves, come, uh, the time when uh, people are angling themselves yeah. for positions and where uh, their interests will be had at the table of negotiations. Where shall we be? Who shall we be with? And, and what interests do we want to advance forward? That's the discussion that we had. And, uh, because we want to be better citizens, we want to be a better community, and, and uh, we are holding ourselves high with our dignity and our pride, and we have no apologies to make for, for having met in Sagana. Yeah. We do that fully realizing that every other Kenyan has also the right to be where they are. And, 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 and that's the way it is. Yeah. Okay. All right, so there's something else that also happened on Monday where there was drama between uh, Simbarati and Silvana Sosoro. It happened in a funeral. Governor Mutua, you've actually spoken mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. this before. Let's listen to what you had to say, then we get into that. Naomba pole kwa padri. Klaji ulisimama pale ukatuambia tuspige siasa familia walikutana jana wakasema tuspige siasa lakini sisi wana siasa tukakuja tukalete siasa kwa mazishi ya munda wetu professor kibwana amejaribu kuwa a bit polite lakini mimi nataka kusema hiyo ni tabia mbaya we have an arrogance in our country of the political elite very arrogant who think it's all about them it's all about them and politics and competition Tabiambaya, shame on you. Kama unataka kutafuta siyasa ya kuongea kufa, tukuja kwa yako, tuongea kwa yako. But do not sit here and distress the family who have lost by going on endless politics and war against other people. Bad manners. You don't see this happening in other parts of the world. It only happens in Kenya. Ni tabiambaya na tuachana hiyo tabia ya siyasa kwa mazishi. That Tabi Empire that you're talking about mm -hmm. boiled out into an actual physical fight mm -hmm. in a funeral at the mm -hmm. same time. Is anyone listening to this? Well, I, I think it's just uh, it's, 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 it's the arrogance I'm talking about. You know, the political class is so arrogant. They don't care. Utadu. And it comes back to what you talked about, impunity. 
because I've been getting away with it all the time. The people have said, don't say this, but they still say it. They get away with it. Then it's seen as the normal thing. But if there's cracking of the whip, then people <coughs> realize it's the wrong thing to do. I, when I go to funerals, I don't uh, talk politics. I talk about the person who has died and yeah. the community. Because it's the right thing. You are there, you've got a family. There's a child there who knows that daddy will not be there anymore. Mommy will not be there anymore. There is a spouse there who knows that their loved one, Amelala Hapo, atakuwa kwa kitanda, atakuwa na kana ewa kiangalia TV, forever and ever. And yet you come there and you're talking about hustlers. You come there and you're talking about BBI. You're talking about 2022. A, a funeral that should have ended a long time ago because they are grieving goes on until 6, 7 o'clock. And then what happens? This was, uh, I was talking about during Senator Kabaka's funeral. What happened? Do you know that that's, that funeral had so many senators, so many legislators, uh, so many people, after it was over, everybody left. There was nobody to carry the coffin to get it back to the car to take it for burial. All the colleagues, senators, phew! Wame maliza story yao. Wame piga siyasa. Kila mtu sharp, ma helicopter, ba 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 ba. Wakaenda. Wame maliza kazi yao. Nobody gives a hoot about the family. They were using that as a platform yeah. to come and sell their ideas. People were bust to there to come and shout Ruto, Ruto, Ruto. Others were bust to come and shout Kalonzo, Kalonzo. Others were bust to, you know, Tabiambaya. It is actually primitive thinking if you think about it. This is not in the, in the system of evolution <coughs> of from uh, where we came from to where we are. This is derogatory, you know, uh, degenerative. Yeah. Is that how you say it? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Thinking. Yes. You know, yes. and uh, there's something happening. Yeah. And you listen to those people, and I, I go, and that's why you got some functions, and you listen to politicians, and you feel your brain cells dying. And there, that is a problem that we yeah. have to cure in this country. Okay. We have to have a country whereby you can respect different uh, times are for different things. Yeah. Funerals are for burying the dead. If you want to have a political rally, uh, sell your problems, sell your issues. Go and call a political rally. Don't wait for somebody to die yeah. to gather an audience for you. Okay. Mola, what do you make of the incident between uh, Simbarati and Silvana Soso? Yes, that incident, uh, and I want, I'll speak to it presently. But let me just tell Senator Cheregai that <laughs> efficiency can never be faulted. Mm -hmm. You cannot say Sayer County Assembly is too efficient. <laughs> what you should do is encourage Nandi County to be equally efficient. Or more efficient. Or more efficient, whether in rejecting or passing. Mm. But last week we were here, and uh, you remember the speaker of uh, Nyandarwa County gave six solid reasons why, in his view, the counties will pass the BBI. And without going through them, it's just to say that <laughs> if they don't pass it, a lot of the things they've been crying about will never come to pass because I gave the example of the World Development Fund. There's no day it will ever pass as legislation in Parliament. It's only if it comes uh, in, in this guise. And what's most important is to ask yourself, as you, you know, quickly say, you know, Nandi will not pass and all, that so if you don't pass BBI, who are you punishing? Mm -hmm. Because there's this perception that, oh, if we don't pass BBI, we are punishing Raila. I mean, it's a total misconception. The presidency is in the current constitution. Rael has already been prime minister. He would have no reason to be fighting to be prime minister again. There's only one other seat that he has not occupied. So if the idea was that you think by not passing BBI, you'll top Raila from being president, then you're mistaken because the president will still remain. What BBI sought to do was to broaden in the spirit of inclusivity. And I agree with Senator Matangi that in this country, no one will get to the presidency without an alliance, mm -hmm. you know, at some level. And that goes with the deputy presidency. But you see, the, the more they sit, the broader the alliance. And the broader the alliance, the more the cohesion. Mm -hmm. That is the thinking. It's not about <laughs> that one uh, seat. Now, coming back to what happened um, at the funeral, I think it was unfortunate. Um, and I must say that, you know, Honorable actually is my client. Uh, how I represented him in his cases all the way in his election petition successfully to the Court of Appeal. But on this one, he did not take counsel. Uh, had he taken counsel, I would have encouraged him not to go that way. Because I saw that he had been given the opportunity to speak earlier. 
and he spoke very strongly and was pointing at Raila and lecturing him directly. He was not talking about the funeral. So when then Simbarati came and took his turn to lecture the deputy president, Honorable Soro found it in his place to be the one to go and physically stop him from speaking. Now, all the things that happened and that kind of direct address to leaders is not appropriate at a funeral. But to now take it that you want to go confrontational when you had done the same is wrong. The reason that these kinds of things go on are there are three categories to blame. The first category is the family itself. There are enough funerals where the family says no. Even though this may have been a politician or there are politicians present, we will not allow politicians to speak. Or if we do, you allow a limited number and you talk to them and tell them, please, do not touch on this kind of policy. They don't listen. That's me, number so, one. So, so, so interrupt I, I usually listen, they, so they I know we can they, listen. They don't listen. No, they, just hold on. they don't listen. listen. Yes, yeah. you, the family. They're arrogant. And if you thought that that would be the case, then you allow the politicians to come and mourn in peace without speaking. I've been to funerals mm -hmm. where politicians are not allowed to speak. Mm -hmm. The second problem is the church. Mm -hmm. The church actually encourages politicians to speak for one reason. Most times the politicians who speak don't just speak and sit down. They then give donations. Those donations is what keeps, sometimes part of it remains with the family, but mostly it goes with the church. So most <laughs> church guys would like politicians to speak because then, you know, that basket of contribution then improves. But the third one is the people. Yeah. I've been to funerals where I chose not to speak about politics, but then in fact, when other people are speaking, you find people are disinterested. Then the politician is called, and everybody now gathers. And then they start asking you, BBI, BBI, or things like that. When you say, today I just came to mourn, I do not want, then they provoke you. Now, you know, it's kind of also difficult to, to give the politician a microphone and tell them not to speak about politics. What do you want them to speak about? <laughs> you see, it's like inviting a priest to speak and you do not want him to quote the Bible. What we should do though, yeah. is that we should be measured even as politicians. Yeah. Even if you must speak, you can speak some level of politics that is not provocative. For example, if you start telling people uh, you know, the, of the need to register as voters, the need to take ID and to register as voters so that you can vote a person of your choice. If you start telling people that do not be divided along class lines yeah. or along Things that are not provocative and you make it short. But all in all, we as politicians should be tampered. Yeah. When you attend a funeral, you should not make it the arena like it's a rally. So that everyone forgets that it was a funeral. Like mm -hmm. now, the funeral we are talking about. You know, my brother Mangis, we were with him in school in Maranda. Yeah. Now, the funeral, no one talks about the loss of the parent. Mm -hmm. Everyone talks about the confrontation. It's quite unfortunate. All right. We need to be tampered. All right, Gerard, I want to bring you in on this issue really quick. And why can't you just then reject the BBI efficiently? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I, I want to join my colleagues that uh, when you look at Chapter 6 on leadership and integrity, it was very unfortunate for the two colleagues to fight. And, uh, and I hope it is not the trend that we, we want to take uh, around. And, and I want to correct something that... Uh, Governor Mutua tried to say that uh, when the funeral of our colleague Senator Kabaka uh, was over, uh, everybody left. You remember Senator Wambua, Senator Sakaja, and Senator Mutula Kilonzo Jr. remained behind until the entire process uh, was, was over. I think Governor Mutua should just say uh, that he's the one who left earlier than anybody else. Uh, number two, and, and when I hear Governor Mutua talking about integrity, it surprises me because he was the government spokesman when uh, former interior minister, uh, the late John Mishuki, led uh, a raid against media houses. So when you talk about integrity, you should be very careful because the Bible says don't look at the lock in the, your eye as opposed to the lock that uh, your brother has. Secondly, on the issue of BBI, <coughs> I want to say there is no efficiency, yet there should be timelines. Because I have even seen uh, in your tweet, because uh, Daybreak is, is trending, uh, Trevor, of course, when you are in studio, it normally trends is that um, some of the people from CI are complaining that they have not even seen the BBI document. So I'm wondering whether they were contributing best because Baba is supporting, 
or because they think BBI document is good, or because they think it is efficiently to dispense off. And I think my, 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 my thinking is that the MCS did want to dispense off to please Baba, because the problem is that BBI has been attached too much, too much to Raila Odinga until it has been personalized. And you remember even the likes of Otienda Molo has been saying, if you want to oppose the BBI, just oppose. They don't want even to listen to contrary views. They don't want to listen to the reasoning behind it. When we question that, say, for example, I sit in Senate, and Senator Dr. Uh, Senator Dr. Kimani Wamatangi, I hope I got that right, <laughs> is that we have been having a challenge with the cash disbursements to counties. It is, even as we talk, counties are being owed by the National Treasury to around 70 billion before the end of close of financial year. The question has been, is it practical and re re real to have 35% being allocated to counties? Yet we, we have a public debt that is ballooning to allow now 9 trillion. We might, when we look at the budget proposal statements when we resume to parliament in the next few weeks, is that the, uh, there is a word that uh, Cabinet, uh, tra Cabinet Secretary uh, uh, Ukuri Atani is seeking to raise public debt to around 12 trillion. We are operating a budget that is always deficit, that we need to do local borrowing and other form of borrowing uh, from other uh, entities, including World Bank and many others. And we are looking even staring at possibility of having structured adjustment programs such that we're having in the early 90s to try and fix the economy. So I think on the issue of uh, BBI, we have a lot of reservations as the people of Nandi because we look at the issues that this, the, 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 the argument that we need to broaden the, the executive and the parliament so that we can have an inclusivity. Let me ask a simple question. Yeah. For example, Jubilee has been in power. Uh, the leader of majority, as we talk today, uh, the state, state house appointed uh, uh, the former minister, Kimunya, is the majority leader. If the majority leader was the prime minister, how will it fix inclusivity? Yet the president comes from the community that Kim, uh, Kimonia comes from. He could now be the prime minister. Does it fix the issue of inclusivity? So I think in an ideal situation, I would agree with my learned senior counsel yeah. that it is proper to have a broader executive to include all Kenyans, but it does not fix the issue of inclusivity. Okay. Because it looks like, the, the, finally, allow me, Trevor, it yeah. looks like the ODM or the BBI proponents want us to believe that the BPI will bring inclusivity, yet in a contest of an election, we will always have a winners and losers, and therefore we'll have an opposition, and the people will have won the side of the, of, the, of the government. So I think on the issue of inclusivity, I don't agree, because it does not expressly yeah. uh, give us an option that when you, as a majority party, that you win, or a coalition or majority party, it yeah. will address or fix the issue of inclusivity from tribal uh, issues that we, we have in this country. And right. finally, Trevor, is that uh, these people are fighting the hustler narrative by Team BBI, by bringing in the issue of tribe, yet we have moved from issue of tribal affiliation politics. Okay. I'll take those as your closing remarks, Senator Chiradgi. I'll take closing remarks from you, Senator Omatangi. <laughs> well, uh, running out of time. Okay. In my closing remarks, <laughs> yes. let, me, let, me, let me first uh, congratulate Senator Chiradgi. I, I, I hear you now he's, he's learning quickly. <laughs> 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 including how he's referring to uh, senior counsel, Dr. Otiende Amolo. <laughs> now, uh, you, ca you can tell he's learning very, very fast. Yeah. But um, I, I, I didn't get a shot at uh, commenting on, on, on that, um, you know, on the Kisi incident. Yeah. And um, Trevor, allow me to say that uh, if there is one identity that members of parliament are struggling with right now, and any sitting member of parliament will tell you, whether a senator or, or, uh, or, or a uh, member of the National Assembly, yeah. we have a big problem with perception of the public, respect from other institution office holders, acceptability from other uh, government offices. I mean, when you go there and you describe yourself or identify yourself as a member of parliament, the first thing that is seen about you is, is, is the negative uh, in you. I mean, you look like a cheap hoodlum. Uh, I mean, and, and there is no end as into saying how many times is a member of parliament mishandled or mistreated when they appear either in government offices, maybe when they're going to negotiate something for on behalf of their people, even when they make public appearances. And you know, my biggest problem, Trevor, is when we go ahead to confirm 
some of those things by, by virtue of our, of our actions. I mean, what, what simply happened in Kisi is, is petty, it is immature, it's juvenile, it's irresponsible. I mean, I watched the whole of that episode. You can't believe, you can't believe that those are two members of parliament. And I don't want to go into the detailed chronology that um, Dr. Otiende Amolo uh, went through. But I was asking myself, and without even apportioning blame yeah. anyway, uh, because both guys were wrong in the way they handled the matter. But, but for this other fellow called Osoro, yeah. sitting down there, and he has the audacity to rise up and make several steps to the podium, walking with his head high, ready to go and fight. And, and, and I mean, that's shameful. It's shameful. You know, and, 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 and you want to ask yourself, you know, I, I normally ask myself, Trevor, do these guys have children in the house? Are they fathers? You know, are they uncles to, 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 to kids who are in, who are, who are in school? Do, do, they, do they want to, to be remembered as, as people who, who, who are leaders of community? That they, they, they would be somebody's hero. Yeah. You know, I mean, it is, I, I just want to say to these guys that, uh, you know, the more you do this, the worse the institution of parliament and that position becomes. Because, I mean, somebody, I've, I've repeated this uh, before in, 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 in this uh, sitting, uh, Trevor. Yeah. Uh, politics doesn't have to be a blood sport. You, 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 it doesn't have to, and, and how, to what extent would you, would you, would you drive down uh, praise and worship? You, you, you know, if, if you want to, to show that you are loyal to somebody, yeah. it, I mean, how, how low would you want to lick boots? And it says that, that you're, wi wi you're willing to stand up and go and throw punches and get strangled and, and, and sit on the floor and get floored. Yeah. Like, like somebody with no, with no identity, just to, to show that you, you are, you are loyal to somebody. It is, right. it, it is, it is not palatable. Okay. So, so anyway, uh, for my closing remark, let yeah. me say, um, uh, Trevor, I, I, I want to say to this country, from where we are moving on onwards to 2022, We've got to be, anybody who cares about this country, yeah. we've got to watch ourselves and okay. what we are saying and what we are doing. Otherwise, if we don't do, do, do that, we are preparing ourselves again yeah. for what we did in 2007, right. 2008. Dr. Tiende Amolo, very briefly, closing remarks. I want to remind Kenyans that uh, the county assemblies are not the end in this BBI process. It is only the first step. And uh, once it has come through the county assemblies, then it comes to parliament. Then it now comes to the people. So anybody who has read or has not read or wants to read still has the opportunity to ultimately say yes or no. I want to urge all the county assemblies to emulate the efficiency of Sayre County okay. and deal with the BBI draft. Okay. Governor Mutua, finally. Uh, uh, three quick points. The first yes. point is about uh, what happened in Kisi. Uh, it's despicable. It is... Uh, primitive to say the least, barbaric. You don't wake up and engage in violence because you don't agree with what somebody says. And also my advice to Osoro is that, you know, if you're going to fight somebody, go, go knowing how to fight. You don't go to start a fight alafu na stop wa baba na hiyo. Unaibisha unaibisha bibi yako hata bibi yako akienda kwa kiosk anaibika ulichapwa au unaanza vitu ukachaga ukachapwa kabisa ume. Number 2 uh, Nandi. Yeah. It was rolling all over the ground up you know na wika mama yo mama yo nende alianza vita. So you must know how to fight if you're going to engage in fighting. Yeah, Number two is about the, the, the whole question about Nans, uh, Nandi and BBI and not passing and passing. Let's, you know, we've seen a tendency in this country of psychophancy, whereby, and I can bet today, Senator here, if tomorrow uh, William Ruto, uh, who they are psychophants of, woke up and said, okay, to pitch a BBI, we move on with our country. Utaona what we are lying, BBI is out to pitch a BBI. So this psychophancy is denying us the ability to reason for ourselves. Yeah. You know, you're an elected senator, member of parliament, you're a governor. You're supposed to reason for yourself and take a firm position. Why and why not? Not just follow people blindly. And lastly, in all conversations, as you actually say, it's all about money. Yeah. The economy is not doing very well. We are suffering as a country. In this conversation, as we go about the BBI, about what is happening in funerals and everything, we have to ask ourselves, is life getting better for our people? Yeah. You know, are the rich getting richer, the poor getting poorer? Are people being conned by the rich who have made them poorer, that now they're the hustlers? Are the, the poor people looking at the wrong people? So at the end of the day, we need a country whereby people can wake up in the morning, yeah. and it doesn't matter who is in power. 
who is the president, you can still go out there with a dream and make your dreams come true. All right. And that is where we need to take Kenya. Yeah. And that is where we need proper change in 2022 okay. to usher in a new dispensation where it doesn't matter who is the leader. Yeah. At the end of the day, you can make your own bread. All right. Thank you so much. Let's bring up the feedback before we close this discussion because it's time for cooking tips. I see there's a lot of raging debate online. Uh -huh. Let's keep letting. See if we're, what you're saying now. We have to see what is happening there. It's a Twitter, Trevor Mbidja, Citizen TV, Kenya, hashtag Daybreak. It's Kipleting says, does it mean a youth like me whose aspiration to be president can't vie because Moi ruled? Voting lies squarely on people. One man, one vote. All right? Let's see. Timothy Mudeki says, Kenya as a nation hasn't been led by two tribes. It has been led by Kenyatta, Moi, and Kibaki family. Can't be clearer than that. Okay. Edwin Yakweba says, NCAC is a joke. Why can't these hate speakers face the rule of law? What does these guys have to lose being in that list anyway? Actually, the voters are a part of the problem. I wouldn't be surprised the list of shame making some more famous and gain sympathy votes. Well, Marco Seno says, fighting in a funeral is disrespectful. It's unfortunate and an African. It's insensitive to the feelings of the bereaved. It's a no. Nashon Kimemia says, blaming the family for politicians talking politics at funerals is wrong. You're grieving and now you're expected to monitor speech by powerful politicians. Politicians should exercise self-control. Don't take advantage of the bereaved because they need financial support. All right. Nobody could have put it better than Nashon there. Honorable Dr. Tiende Amolo, Member of Parliament, Rarieda. Honorable Dr. Kimani Wamatangi, Senator Kiambu. Honorable Samson, Cherargei, Senator Nandi. Cherargei, doc, when is doctor coming on yours? Anyway, that's on a lighter note on His Excellency, Dr. Alfred Mutua, Governor Machakos. <laughs> what are you saying, Cherargei? <laughs> no, the, I'm the only one who is not a doctor. And I'm myself. You and I are the only ones who are not doctors here, so it's okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we had the part yet. All right, thank you guys so much for making time this morning. This has been State of the Nation. We appreciate all your feedback. We do this every Thursday right here. Right now, it's time for Cooking Tips with Willis Raburu with Chef Sharon. All right, coming up next. They require um, bread with peanut butter. Gonavas. Yeah. 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 No, Kukukinyaji, Tilapia with potato. I'm assuming. <laughs> assuming we listen to Josiana now, we're sour. And deep down, I have a pity for you. Sour. Deep down. Ah, no, deep come on, you might think so. If it's personal issues, but yeah. confessing love. <laughs> you must care, Mingi, son. Me, I'm high. I'll tell you. But you see, that one, you're not high enough.